Now that we've installed our Exchange server, what we're going to do now is just have a quick look at the, uh, the concept of the server roles in Exchange 2013. Now, first let's cover a little bit of history. So in Exchange 2003, um, there were really only two server roles. There was the front end and the back end server role, and they were basically the same uh, installation of Exchange, just with um, one extra option ticked in the case of the, the front end server role. That was basically the difference. And the front end server was basically responsible for um, what you see there, those client protocols like uh, OWA, uh, Webmail, ActiveSync, RPC over HTTPS, and the back end was where the Marbox and public folder databases were hosted. So in Exchange Server 2007, Microsoft introduced a, uh, a more complex server role architecture, and they abstracted everything out into five, uh, five server roles. Client access, which was uh, similar to the Exchange 2003 front end, being responsible for those client uh, webmail, ActiveSync, Outlook Anywhere, and other web services. The hub transport server, which was basically for SMTP and for mail routing and delivery within the organization, and also uh, could be used for routing in and out of the organization. The mailbox server role was where the mailbox and public folder databases were hosted. Uh, it also accepted like RPC or MAPI connections from uh, Outlook clients on the network. And there was also unified messaging and edge transport, which were new concepts uh, as far as Exchange architecture went, there was no real equivalent for those two roles in Exchange 2003. Exchange 2010 was very similar to 2007. Um, the same server roles existed. Uh, the main change between Exchange 2007 and 2010 was that the RPC uh, or MAPI communications uh, or connection endpoint was moved to the client access server role. And that's where we saw the concept of the RPC client access service and the CAS array, which uh, was the client access high availability uh, model for Exchange 2010. Most of the other things stayed the same. Within the mailbox server role, there was um, uh, changes in the high availability models and things like that. But um, in terms of just the high level server role architecture, uh, largely the same. So Exchange 2013, uh, in some ways takes us back to more like the Exchange 2003 days. We have um, basically now two server roles at the moment, uh, the client access server role and the mailbox server role. So the client access server role um, is uh, constantly referred to by Microsoft as a thin stateless proxy, and that is a very good way of thinking of it. Uh, it is a thin stateless proxy. It authenticates and proxies or redirects connections for different client access uh, protocols. So that's Outlook connections, OWA, ActiveSync, POP and IMAP. It also hosts a front end transport service, which is for uh, SMTP connections. Um, and that primarily exists for being internet facing or you know accepting the uh, uh, incoming SMTP traffic from the internet or from an external smart host. And it's important to note that um, the client access server role doesn't do any queuing or storing of data. So mail will not queue uh, on that front end transport service. Um, it, it's literally just a thin stateless proxy for basically all of those protocols. And, and keep that in mind as you're working with the client access server at all times. It really helps understand what role it plays in the exchange organization. Now the other role is the mailbox server role. And this now consolidates basically all of the functionality from the previous um, hub transport unified messaging and mailbox server roles. So there is a transport, a series of transport services on the mailbox server. The unified messaging stuff has been put there as well. And uh, the mailbox server things are there and, the, and all of those uh, database high availability concepts carried forward from Exchange 2010. Again, there's been a lot of changes once you get down into the detail of those, but a high level conceptual level, um, it's basically a consolidation of those server roles. Now, when Exchange 2013 was first released, there was no Edge Transport server role included. Um, it has recently been announced that with Service Pack 1 for Exchange 2013, the Edge Transport server role will be reintroduced. Uh, it's not clear at this point exactly whether that will be very similar to uh, the previous Edge Transport servers from 2007 to 2010, or if there'll be some sort of radical shift in how that server role uh, is intended to be used in the organization. But at this time, all we know is that it's been announced for Service Pack 1. Um, so if you're watching these videos after the release of Service Pack 1, hopefully there'll be some more information there for you to uh, refer to. 
So uh, in our test lab that uh, we've been setting up so far in this boot camp, we're doing a single server deployment of Exchange 2013. So if you look at it just at a very simple diagram, you've got your clients connecting to the server, but it's it's a, a, a very good thing to think of the server as two separate server roles consolidated onto a single host. So the clients are still connecting to the client access server role, and all of those connections are coming in over HTTPS. Even Outlook connections, which were previously RPC connections, are now being tunneled over HTTPS or SSL. Uh, and that's going to be important to remember as we start looking um, soon at uh, configuring certificates and other things on the server as well. So the client access server role will authenticate and proxy those connections to the mailbox server role, literally on the same server in this case. Um, and if you look here at an even more, uh, slightly more complex example again, where the client access server and mailbox servers uh, roles have been installed on separate hosts, you can see the way uh, all those different protocol flows um, may actually be occurring at any given point in time with client connections coming in through that load balancer being distributed to client access servers and then the client access server will proxy or redirect that traffic to um, the mailbox server depending on you know where that mailbox uh, happens to be hosted on uh, the active database at the time. So I just want to keep things simple though, I just want you to remember that there are two server roles to think about uh, as we start working through the next couple of lessons, client access and mailbox. They can be installed on the same server, which is what we're doing in this example. They can be on separate servers, uh, but both roles are required in the Exchange organization. You need at least one of each uh, for everything to function. All right, so let's move on now to uh, some of the more uh, detailed configuration. We're going to look at SSL certificates in the next lesson.